<clears throat> hello, hello, hello! Welcome back. That was a little bit longer of a hiatus than I thought it would be. But I got so cold that I need to take a shower, so here we are. Post shower edge gamer. I went and put more makeup on and everything, but god damn was I frozen, dude. I was frigid. Like I was actually ice cold. I was I was warming my fucking hands over the uh kitchen uh over the stove while I was cooking my dinner. Like I was actually fucking freezing. But welcome in guys, welcome in. We're hopping back into the real scary shit. Women. <laughs> the scariest thing I can face. In game, obviously. Terrifying. Alright. The hell was that? The fuck? Lock in. Uh. What? The hell? Pictures. I mean, that's cute, but I don't get it. These like background choices? What? The fuck am I doing right now? The hell is happening? Was that the bite of 87? My man, the myth, the legend, what's up, my dude? I'm so stoked to watch the gameplay tonight. Welcome in, Kit Kat! I'm trying to figure out how to start the game. Was that the, the bite of 87? Game saves. Uh, what? Smash. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> the fucking the smash. <laughs> trying to, I'm confused right now. You're you're making me laugh while I'm trying to figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? I'm so confused. Hold up. I feel like I did something wrong. Maybe I did. But, yeah, since I just got done watching a whole playthrough of Markiplier, I decided to... Hello there. The fuck am I doing? I, I, I'm so actually confused, though. Smash. What? Hello, Mario. What? <laughs> I'm so... What the fuck? Okay. That, well, welcome to the Doki Doki Literature Club playthrough. Wait. Oh! This is a desktop! This is like simulating a computer! I think. Oh, I can change the wallpaper? What? <laughs> that is, okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty fucking cool. Your desktop wallpaper could not be changed due to an administrative policy restriction on this computer. For more information, contact your... Wait, what? No, 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 no. Hold up. Hold up. <clears throat> your desktop wallpaper could not be changed due to an administrative policy restriction on this computer. Huh. For more information, contact your system administrator. Devin! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. Oh, and then the pictures I took. You can just make this the background? Like, actually? Because if so, that's kind of crazy. Is that actually what you can do? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh my goodness. That's kind of funny. Wait, it keeps going down. CGs? Secrets? Backgrounds? Wait. 
Sketches? Promo? There's so much shit to this game. <laughs> He's pulling his cock out! Sketch of COD's initial character design. She has really short hair. Hmm. This is, uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Monica. Since Sayodi's our uh, favorite character at the moment, we're going to do this for the background. Why not? Well, actually, we can do this one. I think this is a great background. Let's get all of them. I like this. Well, no, this is my desktop, right? This is supposed to be like my PC. Okay, I'll save it to this then. I think that's fine. It's an adorable little background. You know, fuck! I forgot to read something. Mommy Shit. Milkers! Literally only one of the characters has Mommy Milkers, Izzy. What do you want about? Mommy Milkers! So what did side stories say? The side stories are stories of friendship that are unrelated to the events of the main game. To get all six stories, try writing poems for different characters and viewing their special scenes in DDLC. Is there going to be multiple playthroughs in this game for me? So we can get all of this? Don't tempt me, game. Okay, see, that's fair, though. Music. Okay, I love this. I'm not spamming it. Oh. <laughs> no, you're good. I'm... I'm half asleep right now. Don't worry about it. Oh, hi, yo, Sayori. Mommy Milkers! But welcome in, Bruce Lee fan. Welcome in. I also got handbags, and I was, it was amazing and wild. Found an amazing deal on two handbags that fit exactly what I've wanted. Been looking for it for, like, three-ish years at least. Jesus! Wait, is this, like, an actual song? Daijobu. Poem panic! Huh. Either way, hopping into the game. But, welcome in Bruce Lee fan, welcome in Kit Kat, welcome in Izzy, welcome in everybody. We're hopping back into the game. Um, I just got really confused because the game started up like a computer. And it fucking confused the hell out of me. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna... Hint, you can use the skip button to fast forward through text you've already read. No, I'm good. Okay, so we just shared our poem with, uh, Sayori. So now we're gonna share it with, uh... Let's start off, let's start off crazy. Let's go Natsuki, bro. Dive straight in. Okay, hold up. I got my card. Where is it at? For the voices. <clears throat> my voice is here. I gotta clear my throat, holy shit. see. I gotta remember what these voices are, so Sayori would be basic female, so like, well, it's not really any worse than your last one. And then Monica's like breathy and soft. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. And then deeper female, we'll figure that one out when we get to it. And then Natsuki would be prissy and light. Hi light pitched? Higher pitched? Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. There we go. Okay, cool, cool. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Ah, well, anything that isn't a train wreck I'll take is a win. <laughs> I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Damn. Hey, hey what makes you... Hey, maybe that was a compliment. <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. <laughs> Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Uh, think so? Yeah, well, I guess you've been friends with her so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Damn, girl's trying to scoop me up, apparently. <laughs> I've already established voices, chat. I did voices that I could, like, do 
without me laughing the whole time. I'm trying, I'm, I did it to where I can, like, not, not just, like, cry laughing the whole time. Now, since apparently there's multiple episodes and stuff, I might do different voices depending on that, but anyways. Yep, uh, I already asked that first stream. Well, I asked what first stream? Uh, W episode, it was good to see all the goats again. Awesome, awesome. Already has a first stream, edgy being gay. <laughs> okay, so he already has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. Think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like <laughs> letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Jealousy. Jealousy. Oh Jesus Christ. Matsuki, your poems kill me, girl. I'm ready. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. What the fuck, bro? I can't. <laughs> what? Did I just read? Yo, this shit's already ridiculous. <laughs> Not bad, right? It's, it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. <laughs> yesterday's was way mommy too short. Mommy milkers. Yes, spam mommy milkers on the poor girl with flat chest. Don't don't be so patronizing to the poor girl. Also, as you do it in the voice like the super zesty voice. Oh no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> like I said, I'm trying to do voices to where I don't laugh at myself the whole time. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. Smash. No, of course not. Smash, Jesus Christ. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. You hate bitches who like spiders? I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize- Hello, Mario. How stupid they're being. Like, anyone would, would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. You know people like that? Of course! It's about how everyone Smash. thinks my... It doesn't Smash. matter. It can, Smash. It can be about anything. Smash. Was that the bite Smash. of 87? Smash. I... Smash. I need to get the girl off screen, apparently. Fuck. <laughs> I've grown to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Girl, I do not need to hear you talking about what kinks you have. Please. Please. No. I'm good. Something you're afraid of if people find out. They made fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Smash. Who cares? Smash. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone. And it makes this them happy. Like Alright. Smash. <laughs> Smash. Smash. I think I chose the wrong Smash. combo. <laughs> Smash. The wrong combo Smash. sound bites, apparently. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Mommy milkers. Smash. Like, conveying Smash. emotions is important. Smash. Smash. But I want to make people think, not Smash. just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Alright, Natsuki. 
It took a lot of effort to get through that one conversation. Let's see if we can make it through one more. You know what? There we go. We're gonna talk to we're gonna talk to Monica. This one should be a little bit easier. Hi again, Edgy. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. It's pretty good. It makes you think of Sayori, like the other like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I, I will send you to Jesus. Shy. It's just... I'm <laughs> just teasing. I, I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Atsuki are super, super interesting people. So don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. It's not like... Uh, I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. All right, chat, what are we expecting? Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. The only reason I found you again Violence. is because I looked for shitty content Rating. today and you were on the first page. Waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. What? Math class? Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Play chalkboard? Whatever. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust? An endless poem of meaningless. I wouldn't call chalkboard on a... You don't play chalkboard. Do you? Do you play chalkboard? I'm pretty sure you draw on a chalkboard. <laughs> playing chalkboard on a turntable. I don't... I don't know if that checks out, Monica. Have you taken your meds? Load me! Hey, yo! Girl, chill out. Girl, I need you to calm down. Need to chill. The, the back up, lady. Back up. Hmm. Even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. N no, I never said that. It's this kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. That is very true. We were talking about that a lot yesterday with Sayotis. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what, what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be an, as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. But putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know, you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I'm gonna save because the bitch is freaking me out. All right, Yuri, this should go well. Let's see what you've <clears throat> let's see what you've written today. Hmm. Well done, Smash. Eddie. Smash. Smash. Your skills are already improved. Smash. Smash. Really? Smash. Thanks, Yeti. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh, it, it's nothing. Mommy Milker. You know what? Here, here. I'll give you two Smash. lines in the voices that Mommy you want me to get. Milker. So what are the voices you want me to do? I'll do two. I'll do this line and the two He's voices.
Smash. Okay, so we had the voices we wanted to hear were Bodybuilder, and we wanted to hear Shaggy. Like, I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers, man! <laughs> and then... Smash. Smash. Jesus Christ. Smash. Bodybuilder type voice? What would they even do? I, can't, I don't think I can... What does they even... What do you mean? What do you mean? You know what? That's fine. I'll just, I'll just do my... Uh, I'll just do my... Uh, What's my what's the fucking voice I do for uh God damn it, Izzy, what's the name of my uh Dark Souls 1 character? The one I'm playing as right now. Sir Timotheus! <laughs> I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. There we go. Like, I know you're new to this, man, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. <laughs> I had to smoke, like, 30 joints and down 400 Scooby Snacks to get where Smash. I am. <laughs> Was that the bite of 87? <laughs> you don't need to be afraid to, to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings, and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. Uh, I see. I mean, the girl literally told me to load her earlier, and I don't know what she meant by that. All I know is if a girl walks up and whispers, load me in my ear, I'm just gonna... <laughs> nice. I'm gonna have to immediately call the cops. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um... Smash. Well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course! Is this the poem you wrote for today? Goody nods and timidly hands me her poem. Oh my Jesus fuck, woman. God damn it, you're pretty writing. I can't read this shit. Fuck. I never learned cursive, and this is borderline cursive. Okay. So if I fuck up my reading, I do apologize. Give me a moment. I, I literally never learned cursive, and that's what the, this is like borderline cursive. This is some calligraphy shit right now. Okay. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordin unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic... What? Classic... Par... Oh, okay, so that's what I think it says. Classic Parlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. I'm actually not really sure what I'm supposed to get from that poem. I actually- I, I will say, that stumped me. I actually don't know what it's talking about. Let me read this again and try to think about it. Don't- don't tell me, chat. Chat, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm trying to... Smash. So she's smashing a raccoon. That's crazy. Um... So she's slicing the bread. I'm gonna see if I need to take her stuff as literal, literally here. So... Gave the raccoon a piece of bread. Your subscon subconscious well aware of the consequences. So... Mmm. Mmm. So it's her... It's her... It's her hunger for curiosity is what she's kind of seeing it as. 
and she's like... This is like actually some shit I would read in high school and have to fucking decipher for a goddamn test. This is actually like... I don't know. But I think this is probably abstract enough to where I don't really get what it may be talking about. Um... I can probably... I think I can come back to this. Let's see what Yiddy says about it, because I actually don't really know. Um... I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. <laughs> I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. <laughs> Dude, actually, I, the character is for real me right now. What actually does that shit even mean? That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid Im imagery and conveying emotions through them. Even if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. What? I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Okay. I kinda- I kinda got that. Like, a, I got some of that. If those- it's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She... She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... She's right. I... I mean... Does she really feel that way? Smash. 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 Yeah. Sounds like you do have, do have that in common. That's... Well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? You judgmental hoe bag! How could you do such a thing? I can't believe you do that. That's so mean. So judgmental. And since you've been so judgmental, I'm gonna judge you. Ah, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. I will absolutely gossip. I will be the worst mean girl these women have ever seen. Jesus Christ, Izzy. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. <laughs> what the fuck? I might, I might be ranting a little bit now. Rant away, girl. Rant away. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could sit in front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together any good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really, I don't really do well with the last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Se Sayori, Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, oh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Um. Monica? Yeah, we're going to be. We're going to have a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems, too. Sayori's putting it all on posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. <clears throat> Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't! You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. Hello, Mario. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. 
We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. When we start the event, each put on a good performance. It will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! You mean I wasted my tomato sauce? The tomato sauce! Um, I was expecting more blood. This hasn't quite this isn't quite bloody enough for Yarnum. <laughs> Quartz. It's it's about express <clears throat> I almost did Natsuki's voice. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun! That's right. It's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same things that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, I know you can do it. Uh... Atsuki and Yeti remain silent. COD looks worried. I guess that leaves me no, leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Mo Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Mm. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Wow, that's a fucking first. Amazing. You know, I really love all their hairstyles, by the way. I gotta give it to the game designers. Every single one of these characters have a good hairstyle. I l Sayori has extremely high quality shorter hair. Like it's just that perfect layered mess. Natsuki has extremely good layered hair, uh, short layered hair as well. I love how it's like, like she's not, she's got like twin tails in her hair, but they're like done to where it's not like pigtails. Like they're actually like twin tails while still having a little, a lot of her hair down as well. It's like a really cute, it's like a really cutesy vibe. And then Monica's, hers is simple, but it's well kept, and I love the I love the dangles and the long ponytail. And then Yeti's just got beautiful long hair. We gotta love her. Gotta love her. Uh, uh okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over get over it. Get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yeti? Mm. Yeti dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yeti! Smash. This, cl <laughs> this club is seriously going to be the death of me. <gasps> Fizz that subtle foreshadowing! Oh my god. That foreshadowing! Oh my goodness. Great googly moogly! Someone call Perry the platypus. We need him immediately. These anime women are in critical danger. Each episode win? Yo. Okay, I'm gonna play some Mario Odyssey for a bit, then get back into editing. Also, some mod makers added a fifth girl. I think her name was Katonoa. Uh, you added that sound effect on the wrong stream. The smash? Yeah. I had the smash on the fucking wrong stream. Because now every single time there's a woman on stream, you guys are just like, smash. Even Monica can't believe it. Oh gosh. It'll be fine, Yeti. But anyway. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of the strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook for the, to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins, begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this someone sh something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Just Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yori has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! 
<laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden? Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It... It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce, confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns, and it's structure that she enunciates with perfect timing, and leaves everybody confused as she talks about raccoons for some fucking reason. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back in reality and glances around her after she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were caught so off guard that we, mu we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good! Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Girl's passed out. She died. I'll only be using it when Natsuki say Yuri or Yuri's on screen. Uh, Kotonoa was more of the transfer student kind of character. You know that type. Also, uh, someone who's just kind of like doesn't belong, but they just kind of show up out of nowhere. Oh, Jesus Christ, Izzy. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops up out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called my meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori! It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I, were, if I were to read this on paper, I'd probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Edgy liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What's that even mean? You fucking... What? Yo, I cannot with how dense this motherfucker is. That came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of general delivery wouldn't work as well. You might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before Edgy. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Edgy lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Natsuki... It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. I am a ladies' man, after all. I gotta please them. I just threw my nail filer. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I've written two and a half poems. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Please stop staring at me with your different expressions. You know what's honestly creepy about Monica's face? She has the most AI-generated face I've seen ever. Like, Yuri looks like, you know, she's actually having some thoughts. Like, you know, like, Yuri looks like she's, he's pulling his cock you know, out! Yuri's not pulling her cock out. <laughs> Yuri's, you know, deep in her thoughts. Natsuki is kind of like, you know, curious. She's like curious. Like, she's not sure of, like, what to expect. And Sayuri looks excited. And then Monica just has the most blank fucking face I've ever seen. 
and it's so goddamn creepy. <clears throat> like she's literally like, like she's a fucking me character from from Wii. I'm a ladies' man, edgy, edgy immediately after I drop my no filer. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look gorgeous for the ladies. Okay, that's a requirement. And the guys, I don't mind if I don't mind if they stare. I stare at myself too. I get it. Even on my bad days like today, where I'm, where I've barely slept and I'm wearing a beanie. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really good as good as everyone else. <clears throat> don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat, makes her way to the podium, stampering the whole way. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Huh. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Jump! Jump around! I know that song! I know that song! <laughs> Atsuki takes a breath and then drops the hottest bars we've not seen in years! We thought Eminem was up on that podium for a moment. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. Who would have guessed? While she's still a little un unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. If not, It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. And she huffs back to her seat. Oh, you bet she does. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, I'm doing it in front of other people. Other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a, <clears throat> that's a surprise, Matsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice for the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time that you, what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I already I already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festivals, we'll finish planning tomorrow. And then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, dude, chill out. Stop creaming. Stop creaming. And I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to this? I have four different women staring at me! The poem is called Pain in the Neck. I still can't believe Barack actually rapped to Eminem's lyrics. Wait, a president did that? Lameo? That's kind of crazy. It's okay, Edgy. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry. I was spacing out. Ah, oh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I would still walk home with Sayori. Ooh, ooh, hold up, hold up.
say Yuri. You really think I would, I would ditch you for Yuri? Huh? But, 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 she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to be really, really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Edgy. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted to, so. See, Yuri, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure, figure you out sometimes. But sorry. This, besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm? The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Okay. Hold up. Save. Okay. What does she say if you pick something else? Because you can, you can still load the other ones, right? Talking about Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful? Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez, there's not even any point in speculating. Wait, what? What? No, you bitch! No, fuck you! I don't want to pick that! I don't want to pick that at all! You motherfucker! Is this game fucking with me right now? <laughs> I think this game's fucking with me right now! Is this some Undertale shit? <laughs> oh, thank God. Whew. I did not- Okay, I thought I fucked it up for a second. Was that the bite of 87?! Really, in fact, it was extremely recent. Eminem and Barack Obama were to Kamala. Rally and Barack rap to Eminem's lyrics. So that's pretty cool. Just likes hanging around you. Hanging around me, of course. Smash. This game fucking with you? Never. Ooh, parfait. Sounds nice. Scars? Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Welcome in, Birches. Welcome in. Nothing wrong with a good climax. There we go. Smash. Silly climax. A boop, a boop climax. <laughs> Swimsuit climax. I can't. <laughs> Swimsuit adventure. Smash. Oh, goodness. Cheeks! Smash. Reef. Smash. 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 Zone. Hopeless. Woman! Are you good, Sayori? Kiss. Oh, well, all right. Bed. Oh, God. Was that the bite of 87? Fear? Incongruent? That's a pretty interesting word. Aw. Alone. Oh. Broken? Oh. Defeat? Oh. Cry? Oh. Empty? Oh, God. No. No. Disaster. Oh, thank God. At least there's that shame. Oh, fuck me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Aura. Save it with Aura. Oh, God. Oh, God. Chat, she's scaring me. The waifu is scaring me right now. I'm terrified. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in, too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. 
remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Aw, oh, I can't wait for the festival! It's gonna be great! Uh, weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where you get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food! You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people! That... I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because! It's right in your name! Ma... Monica. Eh? Eh? That's not how you say my name. This is a Japanese joke that's completely flying over my head. This is definitely a Japanese joke that I don't understand. Oh, you know what it is? It's probably... It's... There probably is, like, Monica and Monica. That's probably what it is. Because I know, I know Japanese has, like, saying something up or saying something down. Like, uh... So they, they must be doing something like that. For any of you guys who don't know Japanese, th there is a difference between those. You can talk talk up and you can talk down, and depending on how you pronounce it, will change uh, what it means, right? So, um, for, uh, more than likely, Monica, like Monica, Monica, depending on how you say it, probably would change it to mean squid, basically. Or it could be like Monica, or Monica, or Mon Monica. Like it's it's kind of like you know. Like I said, just which way you're going with your voice. I'm probably doing a really bad example of it as well, but my educated guess from the little bit of Japanese I understand, that's probably what they're going off of. <clears throat> also, that joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> well, <laughs> she said it herself. Uh, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for today, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. The reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are! Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori! I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, uh, of course! Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori, sh Sayori shows me a big, fake-ass smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly, worry, worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. See, this is the type of moment where I would immediately, like, ask to have a sleepover. Or a... You know, like a sleepover or something at their house because like this this is such red flags it's insane and I'm not even just saying that for like you know th the game but like just people in general this is such crazy red flags but the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently since they've been preparing for the festival they must be spending a lot of time together I timidly approached Monica, who was shuffling through some papers at her desk. Edgy, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Oh, Jesus. Maybe, maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not... I'm not the one asking you, Edgy. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's i know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her, talking to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are 
you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Edgy. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I'm, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Zidi talked about you more than anything than anything else, you know? What? Uh, he's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light has turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it's always been. <laughs> you're so funny, Edgy. Have you thought that maybe you're always seeing her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, uh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks around the room where Sayodi is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayodi and gently talk to her. She keeps her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and have fun with everyone else. That's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her when I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I knew it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I'm, I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Who should I share my show my poem to first? I am worried about our girl. First person we're talking to. God, she already looks so not okay. Smash. Smash. <laughs> Come on. Smash. Leave the depressed girl alone. Just because a woman is sad doesn't mean Dick is going to immediately make her happy. Jesus Christ, guys. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Edgy. Uh, uh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. He's pulling his cock out! Smash. Is everything alright? Uh, um, of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> You want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, Edgy. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. Hello, Mario. You mean I wasted my tomato sauce? But in the end... Yeah? I guess you're the one who likes the likes this one the most. Why? Oh god. You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait! Of course I do! That doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to s sometimes put up with me, and I have to sometimes put up with you, but we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? N no. E Edgy. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steadily. Steady, all of a sudden. If, if, if you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori! I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori, I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Edgy. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? 
That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. I've... N dude. Oh my god. I don't know, maybe it's because I have manic, dep manic depressive bipolar, but my god, have I ever not seen such gigantic, excessive... I would not let this woman walk home by herself. I I don't care if she said I was harassing her. I would... That dude... Holy fucking shit. I... No. Like, I don't... What, if you you guys may think this, like, take that as a bad thing, I would not let her walk home by herself. I would, like, demand a sleepover something. Because, like, that's... I, I, I could not go to sleep at night knowing that someone behaved like that, left by themselves, and I just sat here talking to these bitches. Oh, God, I can't. I need to, I need to, I need a, I need a moment to, let's talk to Monica. I need a moment, I can't do Natsuki's voice right now with me dealing with all of that. She ain't even masking it now, like, what the fuck? Girl, repression is not the way, no it's not. Have you ever seen this game, Birches? I, I think you said you've heard of it. Hi, Edgy. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well... Being in this club is one thing, performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no, okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. Get this bitch off screen. I'm trying. It would also make me ha happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I didn't get to see Sayori's... I didn't get to see Sayori's poem. Oh, God, I didn't get to see Sayori's poem. God damn it. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. <laughs> it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori's poems have been getting more and more similar to each, to each, uh, to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? Uh, I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing her as mu much of her this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me. About how Sayori's been a little bit off today. Yeah, did she tell you something? Uh, well... Edgy, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? When you're this good looking, what isn't flirting? Let's be honest. <laughs> I can't, dude. I can't. <laughs> Uh, of course not! I've been treating her like I always do. Alright. Just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Oh, Jesus. Zidi's been acting so much happier ever since she joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Well, never mind. It's really Emotional damage! It's better. It's more of a, no a note, not a poem. Oh, Jesus Christ, Kit Kat! Fuck! Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. The lady who knows everything. An old tale... An old... Jesus. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning. All purpose. And all that was ever sought. And here I am. A feather. Lost adrift the sky. Victim of the currents of the of the currents of the wind. Day after day, I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legends the legend is all that remains. The last dim star, glimmering in the twilight sky, until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and fall. All even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady, 
I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows not knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me black, back afloat. And I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, it was kind of on my mind, That's so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? I mean... It's not really. I mean, it's debatable. That's very debatable. That is philosophical, for sure. I definitely like knowing everything, for sure. Like, if I could just see the guaranteed future, then that would that would be nice, but, you know. I'm definitely one person who would like to know everything if I could, but I understand that a lot of people like not knowing stuff, so. You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know, you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Huh. Crazy. Anyway, here's the Mo here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, the things you work on. It's just more encouraging that way, and it'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening! How much happier does Sayori get here if you actually tell her Yuri? Genuinely. Does she actually get that much happier? Because she's obviously depressed, so if I go back in time, instead of saying walking with her, if I say walk with Yuri, does she actually get really happy? Walking home with Yuri? Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does that thought of, thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe, but I just like to think about it. It's not long before you don't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is diff- everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Huh? If you say so. Conversation trails off and I'm feeling a little awkward. It was kind of her fault for trapping me in such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Okay. That still is not very good to hear, but that's okay. Let's go to... Speaking of Yeti, let's talk to Yeti. Let's get into her cryptic as fuck writing that I can barely read. Well done, Edgy. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this, it's a lot more fun and rewarding than, than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I really can't disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be, be a chore. It's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in this club. But it's been f but it's been fun getting to know everyone and their writing. And I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Edgy? Eh. Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe that's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. 
I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Jesus Christ. Eh, why me? Well, you're always, sof always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yoni thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. What? For me to have to become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unthinkable of me. Yudi, it's not as bad as you're making it out and sound in your head. I just mean that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to these sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. Yudi. What? What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. You want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. This... God. Jesus, man. This is... The beach. Oh, here's your beach episode, Izzy. Here you go. Just what you asked for. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth... That says chaotically, right? Is that an O? God damn it, I smash. can't. I can't. Smash. You're gonna smash the poem? Smash. You're gonna smash the Smash. Beach. Smash. A marvel, millions of years in the making, where the womb of the earth chaotically meets the surface. Under the clear blue sky, an exposure of bliss. A beneath gray, rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? That's that sounds super saucy, by the way. God, drag that mine out of the gutter. Stop spamming Smash, you're putting my mind in the gutter. Or will a sudden wave send you chasing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Smash. Yet we Smash. still build sandcastles. Smash. I stand Smash. where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish in the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary, boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to the ends of the shore. Or sorry, I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drive, tr drive forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. That was a lot. I'm aware that the beach is kind of an insane thing to write about, but I did my best to make a metaphorical approach to it. Was that the bite of 87? It's probably about to be here in a minute. You said it like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was, it was amusing that we wrote about Smash. something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles, or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it was... It's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But... Well, I suppose it's not... It's not bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. I can just feel the dark tension of this game right now, chat. They did a really good job with it. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's, anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad that you're trying a little bit. Well, of course I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my... Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems, anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? It... No! Gross! It's not like I care or anything, Baka. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me away? Oh, that's, um... It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. Damn! Good. Natsuki's elbow connects with my stomach. Yo, assault? Damn. Oh, maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh my god. The bitch is trying to make me throw out my lunch right now. I just ate dinner. 
Oh, I know. Don't worry. I, I was too. <laughs> How the hell do you call that a joke? Woman, you assaulted me. <laughs> that seriously hurt. Oh my god. Well, maybe it was funny to her. Thank Jesus Christ. Jesus, is he? I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Natsuki. <laughs> anyway, Natsuki holds her palm out to me like nothing ever happened. I'll be your bitch. I mean beach. Woman, stop hitting on me in these poems. God damn it. I'm not trying to share the load Lord of the Rings Samwise Gamgee style. If anybody remembers that Smash. quote off the top of their head, you know the... Share the load. Share the load. You know, that that thought. I need to see if that's a blurp, because that shit kills me. <laughs> Fucking kills me every time I see it. It's like the Elrond Let's Plays scene. <laughs> He's pulling his cock out! Oh my god. Your mind is so f <clears throat> Okay, sorry. Let me actually get some water so I can read it properly. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. This is sweet. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Wow. Yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. Well, Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Geez, she's... She better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Ugh. You can really see her doing that, too. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy? Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical, too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was a good practice. This place is falling apart, chat. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Did she? Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Eh? Huh? Well, it did sound a bit unusual. That's right! You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. What's your usual catchphrase? What did I what did I com what did I mess up? C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez! Why is the mood so weird today? Like even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Oh fuck me, bro! Why do you have to do this to me right now? In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Ah. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck does she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, pl Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! Ah, uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to, to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? God damn it, Natsuki! You're absolutely right! <laughs> so much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Oh my god, just punch me in the dick. I elbowed me in the stomach, just punch me in the dick, please. Fuck. Uh, reverse time. 
this <laughs> Stand -o bite to the dust! Reverse time, please! Let me go back. Let me leave with her. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. We might need a lot of them, and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! As, as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for you, Yuri? Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Guys? Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No! That's not it at all! He's the most talented person here, you know? Now, Natsuki's pouting, too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sidi enough credit. But I can tell things are even harder when you see... When, when, uh, on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. A atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere! Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway... That just leaves you, Edgy. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In <gasps> fact, he's pulling his cock out! In fact, he's pulling his cock out. Oh my god. Who the fuck? It is he. Is he. Oh my god. What? I'm not playing Hoonie Pop, bro. <laughs> Jesus fuck. I'm, I'm just gonna have to be lucky that they at least said all the characters are of age at the beginning of the game. That's really what we're riding off of at this point. I swear to God. What the fuck? What the fuck? Chat's trying to... <laughs> make this more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. I'm just... That you do. That you do. You all make this more enjoyable. Both Natsuki and Yeti have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably... Go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give it to you. Jesus. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Atsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um... If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Edgy, Edgy may not like to be around if you only ma make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Edgy to... W what are you saying? It would be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, ladies, 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 ladies. One at a time. One at a time, please. Let's uh... smash. <laughs> Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Edgy to decide who he'd like to contribute to. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this all? Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Edgy, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, of course. Okay, this is gonna be a a big choice. We're gonna put this on page two. Humph. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Of course, I'm going to go with Sayori. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... 
what Monica said. Monica said that Sayori was help. Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? N n no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Good gods, let me pour some Pedialyte for them. They so fucking thirsty, <laughs> damn. They want the Femboy D. Okay, I'm not gonna pick Monica, but I'm... I wanna see what they say if I pick Monica. Well, I guess I should probably help be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me! Hold on one second! Y yeah Monica, you're the one who needs to help out... He's at least help out all of us. Uh, but... I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already more most suitable for one person, you already have Sayuri as well. But Edgy was the one who... Uh, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives... Motives... Motives interfere with your decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motives. EXCUSE ME?! Otherwise, this wouldn't have been su into such a big deal in the first place. That's... that's completely false, Monica. Yeah! We have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Ah, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, succeed we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um... Uh, so are you going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay. I get it. <sighs> it's technically most logical for Edgy to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. You have any preference, Edgy? Natsuki looks so... You know what? Since Natsuki's the one who's willing to look me in the eyes, at least, I'm gonna look... I'm gonna go with Natsuki. Fuck dog killing. Hear that, Edgy? You're a resource. Right. Jesus. Well... Making sounds like it could be fun. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use, probably use two people. Don't worry! Bacon is a ton of fun! You'll definitely agree! Uh, just wait a minute. You were going to say that? Th that's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway. You'll be fine by yourself, right, Yeti? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. Oh, Jesus, woman. That's good. Even though Yuri is, uh, is being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes! Everything except the performance is going to be awesome! I don't think that really counts. What about you, Edgy? Me? I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yeti? Yeti? She's still sulking. So he starts pouting too. <laughs> Just so much. It's not. I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might not just be that. I think that Yuri might just be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help. <laughs> that doesn't mean. Uh. That's he glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look! That's he goes over and puts her hands down on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri! You really are the most talented one here. And... And you're going to help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too. But you're going to make the atmosphere special. That'll be the really important for the way people feel during the performances. So... You need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. As he releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. Yeti. You... Didn't... Really mean that, did you? Um... Not really, but... Yeti isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki, of all people, be, to be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can say that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah! Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. 
Okay, but I'm staring here a bit longer. I barely have to do any reading today, so... Fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yidi out the door as they chat behind each other. Um, where are you going? Making is super fun, but also good lore requires some fucking witchcraft. <laughs> exactly, Birches. That's why we have to help her with the baking. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Live it to her name and, and do Yidi. Oh, boy. Huh? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally would have gotten home and realized that you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, that's true. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? <gasps> no way. We're getting a woman's number? She, I was given a woman's number? This is insane. You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? <laughs> Natsuki gives me her number. Okay. I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait! You're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I, I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I would be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like, I'd have a guy over my house. <laughs> my dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyway, I just need to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really gonna show you why I love baking so much. So you'd better look forward to it. Oh. Didn't you say you were just going to give me the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like in front of everyone else. That, that's... That I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That's all it is, so... Alright, I get it. Smash. Smash. Sorry for overreacting. Smash. Sorry for overreacting. Smash. Anyway, I'll be Smash. heading out now. See you on Sunday. Uh... Never mind. Okay. Never mind it is. I can't believe this! Natsuki is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? For some Netflix and chill? Even... Even though I... I would have preferred to do this with Sayori. My anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might up, end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. You're so dumb! Oh my god. Netflix on the pill? I need some tea. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, I'm here. Where's my controller? Here it is. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. Check on Sayori! Oh my god, he doesn't check on her? He doesn't check on her for days?! Text her, call her, knock on her door! Ask to hang out before you gotta hang out with Natsuki! Like, not even going with the fact that you're in love with the bitch. You're actually just not even... You're just being a shitty friend right now. You're just like, like, even if, even if we're not, so ignoring in love, ignoring like best friends since kids, basic like close friend. You're being a dick. Like honestly, you're being a dick. Oh my god. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. <laughs> we see each other one uh, see each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emojis and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. <laughs> but putting Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left club earlier the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything. 
I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Datsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Thank God. Thank God. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom when I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Edgy. Oh, good. Okay. I feel a little bit better now. I sit down in her room. Her room's adorable, by the way. Look at this. Look at cute little stuffed animals. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I like it. I like it. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I... Uh, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? See, Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals on the wall decorations as she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to be seeing Natsuki today? Yeah, but wait, how did you know about that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided the last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival's preparations, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's true. What about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, oh, so it's just me and Atsuki then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sadie stares into a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Edgy. What? Why can't it, why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you, you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori! I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh... <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Edgy. But... You're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Edgy? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Yeah. Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason there is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? I make friends. I make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me. That's what it feels like. That's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. This is a horrifically accurate take on depression. This is... Wow. <laughs> this is... You came back to depression, Kit Kat. You came back to a lot. We're getting a lot of very accurate... Dis I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just not to think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it you've never told me about this? I almost feel like I've been betrayed as your close friend. 
Oh my still oh my god, you're so dumb. How are I wanna say I could not imagine someone IRL saying that, but I have. I just don't get it when because the thing is, this character I've seen people IRL react to like depression and stuff like this. Oh, I can't believe you betrayed me by hiding your depression. Fuck you, asshole. Stupid ass. <sighs> no, no, you can't follow it up be with the, because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. No, you don't, you do not start with the word betray. You've already fumbled. You can't just try to dig yourself out of the hole you just dropped yourself in. She's depressed. She's lit and you and the first thing you start with is betrayal? That's like the bottom that's the fucking seventh ring of hell. What are you doing? You idiot. Oh my god. I can't. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make everyone every day a little bit better for you. Yeah, but you know what you could have done? Not start with betrayal. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Edgy. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you'd have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else, too. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why... That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> I don't think I ever said this, by the way. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, if you didn't see it, Kit Kat, he straight up, like, blamed her for it. Let me go to history right here. Where is it at? Right. Why is it you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. How do you start with that? <laughs> also, I, I the game says it a lot, but if you are disturbed very easily... This is definitely where you probably want to stop watching the playthrough if you're watching this on YouTube. Stop watching the playthrough if you're easily disturbed and this and you think something will make your mentality worse. Please do go talk to somebody or do something that will help your mental health, whether that be calling a helpline, talking to a friend, family member, whatever that may be. But I will continue with the game. Cause this, I won't, I won't lie, it's, it's crazy reading this right now. Cause they depicted this in a very realistic fashion. Player character's fucking stupid. I, right, right. Fucking, it, so dumb. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. I don't need to understand. See, that's a little bit better. Whatever it takes me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Edgy. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped me is everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I, I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And, and I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and, and I made you hurt too. I'm, I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one! Without thinking, I once grabbed Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, uh, edgy. Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. See, this is better. But start better! Don't... Ugh! <laughs> uh. Seeing every day makes it makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. 
Edgy. Sayori, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No! Don't do this to me! Please don't do this! Edgy! I... Sayori barely messages, manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing this, th this right, doing the right thing. But all I want her is to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Edgy. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. And she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah? It's going to be fun, right? Yeah? How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um... Uh... It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, no, no don't! Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But... It's almost time for Natsuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want me to... Do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be a good, good for me today. You understand, right? Ah. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Natsuki is about to come over, too. Dude rolled a nat 1, but got advantage, so he had a chance to do better. But what a rough start. Yeah, and I'm sleeping on your floor and putting a bed monitor to you. You were you were to never leave my sight. See, okay, I'm glad to see me and Kit Kat are, like, having the same aggressive response to this. I, Me and you are just having the, I will not let you do anything. I, no, I refuse. I refuse. Yeah, no, that's, oh, goodness. So I was trying to simulate, like, tearing up during the voice, but I'm not going to lie, reading it, reading what she was saying, and trying to simulate, like, sobbing while I was talking for her lines, it, it is I could I can see why this game would upset people because I have said not those exact words but I have said similar stuff during my uh, bipolar depressive episodes I have I have literal text messages of almost word for word of several lines that she said has said so I I hate to say this like as a congratulations but I have to applaud the writers and the game designers for understanding depression to the level of writing this, right? Like, like I'd almost think that a psychiatrist who specifically works with depressed people is writing this right now. That's how fucking spot on that is for like what it would be. I'm I'm actively impressed. In uh, sadly, it, it, I hate that, that it's so good, but like that is. That is definitely something you would hear be said. And the reaction to all of it as well. That is the type of, like, depressed reaction you would get to someone who's like that. That's just crazy. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. She would sleep in a bear hug, par partly for comfort, partly so she couldn't go anywhere without my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> weighted bait, weighted blanket, bear hug. No one's moving. Triple locked door, bookcase. <laughs> just you know, 
I spent only a few minutes back home anxiously awaiting Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. What is a cute outfit? That is a really cute outfit. Sup? Hey! I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform, uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make me don't make it feel so awkward already. It's gonna be a long afternoon, so don't, be, don't so don't be weird just Smash. because you're not used to seeing me outside Smash. of school. Smash. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you I see you brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki's carrying a large bag. It's probably full of baking supplies. Well I don't wanna come all this way to find out your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. No, 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 no. Kit Kat's like, no, 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 no. They de yeah, definitely an accurate portrayal. Kit Kat's trying to be the horny police right now. She's bonking Izzy. Smash. <laughs> you bought everything I asked you to, right? Is this some kind of twisted joke? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients. I didn't already have it there. Them at Smash. home. Good. Smash. Glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised you're not Suki suddenly. You shouldn't that. have done it! You shouldn't have done it! You fucking fool! <laughs> Rather than something snarky like she usually does. Gonna be she's a little different outside of school after all. Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. Are you not even gonna offer to take this heavy bag from me? He's pulling his cock out! Oh my god. <laughs> where's your where's your hospitality, Edgy? Come on. Since when did I when did I need to be a gentleman? Ho 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 ho! I grabbed the bag Natsuki holds out to me. This is ridiculously heavy! <laughs> I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm impressed, Natsuki. Seems like I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? Don't! What's her canonical? What is Natsuki's in game height? Like, what actually is her height? I'm, I'm very curious. Natsuki. Betrayal! Jesus Christ. Yo! I will send you to Jesus. Yo! Holy shit! She's tiny! Oh my god! No wonder I'm looking down on her! I'm literally looking down at her! Die. Oh my god! She's 4'11! That's like I I don't usually call people short, but like that is that is really fucking short! Holy shit! Okay. Okay. You jerk! I, that was probably a little mean. I was just shocked, okay? Natsuki hits a fist into my chest. Ow. Hey, hey! Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Uh, um... It's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people. But... Jeez, never mind. What are you making me say? I don't think you made me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. <laughs> what? That's a little, bit a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey! Are you treating me like a kid? I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yeti... <sighs> Doesn't mean you should treat me like a... I, uh... Natsuki catches her words and her face turns red. A girl needs to chill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, she is young and, and small. That's why they specifically said her 18 plus, because they are definitely don't look or act it. <laughs> yeah, Natsuki definitely does not. This is... Eesh. Smash. Oof. Oof. Natsuki, forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. It I appreciate I I appreciate you were trying to be nice, sir. You should have you. Sh I should have been a little more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should just know. No, there are a ton of guys who are into body types like yours. Oh my god. <laughs> just just drop the combo. Just drop the conversation. <laughs> this is a losing conversation. You just don't. Oh my god. Just don't participate in the conversation, main character. This is terrible. I... How... How would you know that anyway? Just trust me on this one. I <laughs> do... What the fuck? <laughs> Just trust me on this one. Yeah, okay. 
Gross! Hey! Was that to me? Who else? And let's just get started already. <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, Edgy. Atsuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. What the fuck? <laughs> what is this? What is this? <laughs> well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied enough for now, finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Jesus Christ. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour spilled, fluid, plastic bags are strewn about every counter countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Edgy, where did you put the food coloring? The batter's going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even if the flavors are, aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Oh, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on! I'm not putting any heart into this at all. Can you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what Natsuki is trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her se separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of the food coloring into each. Ah, uh, that, uh, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end. It's just looking... If just looking at it makes everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made made on my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly representing her cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah, maybe I will use the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you do, you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Eh, the icing's still a little lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It just takes a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Natsuki grabs the whisk from me and uses her hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it into her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the Smash. same. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, huh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger toward the bowl. Now this is flirting. Do you mind? Yes, I just am baking. trying to also. kill you! This is definitely leaning towards flirting at the moment. And now it's definitely flirting. Now, <laughs> now we have no, we're no longer insinuating flirting. It is definitely flirting. Let me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. Oh, Jesus Christ. I push harder enough for my finger to reach the icing. I trump triumphantly scoop scoop with my finger just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Ah! The force of Natsuki pulling me caused me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Bruce! You got it on my face! Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Mmm. Tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Of course it is! It's on her damn neck! How the fuck is she gonna lick icing off her neck? What the fuck? Hello? Is she part anteater? What, what that... What, what that tongue do? Does it reach that far? What the hell? <laughs> that makes no sense. Of, literally, of course she can't. Jeez. You know what? Take this. Just throws the whole fucking bowl at me. Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger toward my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I'm stronger. I'm better. I'm better. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. <laughs> Yo, what? It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. <laughs> Stop! Not until you apologize for calling me gross. <laughs> He's pulling his cock out. That's terrible on this frame, chat. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. You shouldn't have done it's it. You shouldn't have done it. Kit you like, fucking Kit fool. Kat, you should have rewinded. it. You should have ejected from mission. Abort! Abort! It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know? Saying Smash. dumb things to get, get a reaction out of me? You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? 
In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. You're doing it wrong! Do it right! I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. Yo? How is this man nervous around women when he's doing this shit? I... okay. I feel like I'm Smash. like... I feel like I'm awkwardly third-wheeling. Smash. Ooh, what? <laughs> Dude, her fucking face. Hello, Mario. Hi, welcome in, Charismatic K9. <laughs> did, did you seriously just... Uh, that's what you're so surprised she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Edgy! Wow, she doesn't look angry for once. How, what do you know? You really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls unless you really like them. You, you know that, right? Uh-oh. Main character's out here breaking hearts. What kind of question is she asking me just like that? How did the mood turn into this so quickly? How did it turn into this quickly? Motherfucker, are you dead stupid? Anyway, or I started blacking idiot. What? How did it turn to this? It was already this. Emotional This was already the damage. conversation. You're so dumb. Smash. You're so dumb. Asuki gazes at me in silence. I notice, I notice, I notice her shallow breasts. That is a phrase I just read out loud that the game had written in, in the, moving on. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Probably because you're staring at her tits. <laughs> Breathe. Just, what the fuck? What? You shouldn't have done it! You shouldn't have done it! You fucking fool! We could rule them like gods! Angry gods. Give me a moment. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face right now. I can't even fucking... I can't even continue the game. I gotta end the stream, bro. <laughs> I don't think I have ever been more embarrassed on stream in the in the several fucking years I've been streaming. How is this? I can't, bro. I can't, bro. I can't. I have never in my life been more embarrassed. I can't even look at the camera right now, chat. I, dude, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm eating my hair. Nah, chat, you guys gotta give me a moment. Uh, hold up. Let, just... Oh, I'm just not here for a moment. Fuck. Just not... Just don't... Don't look at me for a second. I can't. I can't. Okay. I, I just need... I need my... I need... I need... <laughs> I need... I need no camera on my face for a moment. Okay. Fuck. Fuck. Okay. Do it! Just do it! This is all because I read rom romantic comedy manga today, isn't it? I swear to God. 
I swear to God. Holy shit, okay. I need a... I'm almost okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, let me... I will try to catch up with chat right here. L Rizzler over here. Breathe. It says breathes, you weirdo. Breathes. <laughs> mind, mind in the fucking gutter. Hate to see it. That's right. Be ashamed. <laughs> Bro said shallow breasts. XD. Well, I guess, I guess there's a fucking quote for you, Izzy. Jesus Christ. Izzy, please tell me you clipped that. Ed it happens, it's okay. Edgy's flustered, it's all good, man. Oh no, we aren't letting that go ever. I didn't, I was laughing too hard. This will be uploaded to YouTube. The most flustered I've seen Edgy ever. Oof, Edgy has never been this flustered on stream. No, no I haven't. I have actively never, I have never been this embarrassed. Dude, I have had like, I've literally had one of my ex-girlfriends hitting on me over the phone while I was trying to stream before, and I was less flustered than I am right now. Like, I am just so embarrassed. Like, dude, what the fuck? Oh my god. Okay. What's the quote? I was laughing so hard. Here's the quote. I'll give you the quote, Izzy. The quote that I read was... <laughs> Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breasts. This is, this is... This is what I, that is what I said out loud. Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breasts. <laughs> Just there you go. Natsuki, Natsuki, but you know, whatever. We try again tomorrow. That's what we're going to do. Holy fuck. Also, if if I ever hear someone refer to a woman as having shallow breasts, I'm decking them. That's rude and a weird way to phrase it. Right! Right! That's why I thought it was weird. I, did you guys not hear how weirded out I was? I was like, of course... What kind of... I literally called him a weirdo for that. I literally... So, like, I agree. I completely agree. That is an insulting and super fucking weird way to put it. That's why I was so goddamn confused. Okay, whatever. Move it. Keep going. Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Oh, Jesus. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. <coughs> no wonder! You left a dirty tray in here, dummy! How could you make a mistake like that? You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. I need some water. Jesus Christ. <sighs> breathe. Breathe. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, always check before turning the oven on. Please, yep, that's the PSA of today. Check before turning the oven on. I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. Attention from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment has already been lost. I watch Natsuki uh, slides the cupcake trays into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue, the, continue with the icing like nothing ever happened. Ah, oh, that smells so good. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens up the oven door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. Look how cute they all look! She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even, they'll look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these, noz I have these no nozzles that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can make flowers. We, pro we probably won't be using this using it this time, though. What's this one for? I pick up one nozzle that has a much thinner tip for the others. That one's really thin, so you can use it to make stripes or other patterns. You can also use it to write stuff on a cake. Like happy birthday or whatever. 
Ah, huh, I see. That gives me an idea, actually. Eh? Well, it's a lit literature event, right? We can make it more literature themed by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcakes based on, based on a word they like. I. Uh, hmm. I was kind of expecting to say something really stupid. But that's actually a really cute idea, so. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting it from you. But what's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on. We're not at school. Nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. Dude is crazy. Every time I've heard in the oven, I think of that one scene from The Boys Season 4. Well, Natsuki's voice trails off. Same with you. Huh? You say something? No, 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 nothing! Let's just do the icing. Natsuki picks up the pace and fastens the nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about before, Natsuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing, and then we... We each get to work. When we're finally finished, Natsuki puts them all to the side and admire, to admire our work. Look how pretty they are together. <clears throat> yeah, they they are, aren't they? Uh, I wish I I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but my dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. <laughs> Sayori's the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, we'd we'd probably be down ten cupcakes already. And she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway, I was hoping we'd have time for manga, but I need to get I need to be home for dinner. Ah, oh, already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man. As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayuri each carry some, then you can probably do it all in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. <laughs> this is some kind of twisted joke! I wish you would listen to me the way she listens to you. Huh? Yeah. I again think back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sayori, Sayori always, do always does listen to me, but at, the point, at that point, it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up! Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. And just like that, Natsuki is already about to leave. I feel like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that. Did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki! Eh? What you said before about not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how, to, how fun baking can be, like you wanted. Aside from that, you can come over anytime, okay? I think that if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere. Um, do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely, like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, I want to spend more time with you. Edgy. I thought you only cared about getting this, getting this done. Uh, I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I, I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Atsuki suddenly got closer to me. Yeah, this bitch is one-third of my TV right now. God damn. You, you're right, you can't rush an oven. Wait, Natsuki. Standing inches for, inches for me? Natsuki looks up at me. I mean, she's looking up pretty far. Like, if I were to be looking eye-to-eye -eye with Natsuki, that conversation is like this. Like... Hi! <laughs> like, so it's definitely not this, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. You know what? Maybe, maybe this. Maybe I'm like, maybe, you know, that you know those things where, like, you go to talk to short people? Maybe I, like, squatted all the way down to her level, like, on my knees to look her in the eye, because, like, holy shit. <laughs> because holy shit. Bitch, she will be over every oven. She needs to escape her house. I feel her fingers gently touch the sides of my shirt, as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted, slightly parted lips. What is happening? My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breath against mine. <laughs> Sit on my ass to see it eye level. Damn. I've felt it for a while now. It. Atsuki suddenly jumps back. <gasps> He's pulling his cock out. Sayori. Huh? 
Uh, 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 hi, Edgy. Sayori, just now we <laughs> weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Edgy. I just stopped by to say hi. Oh my god. See, I want to be mad at Natsuki, but it's not even her fault. Literally, this asshole main character just led her on for an entire date while being in love with Sayori. Actually, what an asshole. He's not even charismatic or good-looking enough to be, like, Sylvain. No, he's just an asshole. Ah, uh, uh, well, you should, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Oh, really? That's too bad. Y yeah, well... I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later! Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Never leave my side, bitch. You must stay here. Edgy, he's you. I don't toy... Okay, let me rephrase that. To my knowledge, I don't toy with women's emotions this badly. But... I certainly don't do any physical contact or nothing like that. I certainly don't tackle women, stick their fingers in my mouth, and talk about their shallow breasts to their face. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> no, I don't do any of that. I don't do any of that. I don't go around doing that shit. I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room. My imagination was really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki. And how close you got to her. It makes me... really happy. I can tell that makes you happy. That's why you're crying right now, Sayori. You've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me! Why am I feeling this way, Edgy? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. <clears throat> Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Edgy. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori! What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anyone else. So even if that, even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Edgy. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori, it's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Edgy, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. You remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings. I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give you. See, this is actually the worst. These, neither of these, neither of these are good fucking answers. Fuck. Ah. God damn it, Gabe. God. She is depressed. She just saw you almost smooch with another woman. She just said, I think I like you more than you like me. She said that she loves you so much. She, she likes you so much. She wants to die. She is not okay. And 
Saying I love you, even if you mean it, is not at all the thing you say right now. And then you'll always be my dearest friend. Oh yeah, just fucking stab her in the heart, twist it, pull it out, and then stab her again. Oh my god. Can I, can I, where, can I fill in the blank, please? Fuck. I hate this multiple choice bullshit. This is horrible. Is it? Like, you know what? Here, before I get forced to pick a bullshit choice like either one of these, you shouldn't have done it. You shouldn't have done it. I will say you what my fool. my initial reaction, my initial, what my statement would be. What I think I would say, genuinely, is that I would pull her in, and I would say, "I'm not leaving you." And I won't, I'm not leaving you now. Or sorry, I've never left you before. I haven't, or sorry, I haven't left you yet. And I won't ever be leaving you. You were the closest person to me. And I couldn't imagine a, sing, a single day without you in it. You mean the world to me. That's what I would say. Is this some kind of twisted joke? Welcome in, uh, Shinjito. Welcome in. Welcome in. That is what I would say. Personally. That is what I would say. Cause ne- I will tell you right the fuck now. Neither of these are good. But I'd rather up some- Because this- this one is bad. Because you just almost- Hello, Mario. Kid, which is stupid. So, I'm gonna pick this one. Cause this is better than just hurting her fucking feelings for no reason. But, whatever. I love you. <sighs> Those are my true feelings. There's no way you could like like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize you were truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens, as long as we continue like this every day. With you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Edgy. <sighs> That's so sweet. You know what? This is actually going better than I thought it would. To be fair, the start was shit. The follow-up was good. It's like what he did earlier. This motherfucker has a terrible beginning. He likes to drop the ball and then use the rest of the time to pick it back up. That's that's like his con. That's his. That's like his play. Edgy, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold, I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let me let go of me again. I, I love you, Edgy. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I gotta give it to him. Like I said, he fucked it up. But yeah, you're right. It has been a while, uh, Shinjito. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But, but, but why? Even now. Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Edgy. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to be, be to be better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Oh, uh, okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it's always been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Edgy. Sayori gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Uh, I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I, I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you loved me. That's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. That's my promise. 
I say that in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feeling as she see it as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back on the way they were. Is that what Sayori me meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me. I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. <sighs> yeah, you came in during my first time ever playing a visual novel, Sh uh, Shinjido, so... You're, you're seeing something tr unique for the Edgy Gamer stream. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but aside that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should, ne should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes myself by myself, carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki is already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. Knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Edgy! You're the first one here! Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought, you, thought at least Yuri would be here not by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. There must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You... I'm gonna tear my eyes out. I'm so mad right now. You just confessed your love to this woman that you know is depressed. She didn't get herself out of bed. And your first fucking thought is, Oh, don't let me be late to the festival. Because the festival's more important than the life of my quote-unquote loved one. Oh my god. Oh my god. You'd think that... You'd think that on days this important she'd try a little harder? He can't be for real. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. The fuck? Do you have a fucking coma? And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. Yeah! What are you still doing here? Go back to her house. I only said it because it was the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Yeah. <laughs> you should take a, take a little responsibility for her, Edgy. I mean, especially after you exchange, your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, president after all. Like that matters, you stalker. But I stammer embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez, you don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Huh? Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. I certainly did IRL. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They come out. They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out in the desks. Oh yeah, they. Uh. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yidi's po poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's the one I haven't read before. <sighs> okay. Let's read this poem. A percent sign? Get out of my head. 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 Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of. Get out. Get 
out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. I... Oof. Edgy. What's wrong? Uh... Nothing. <laughs> this poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's, Sayori's written, but more, more than that. I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so... Ah, uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? This man better have never ran faster in his fucking life. I better hear the sound barrier fucking breaking while he's running, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't, don't strain yourself. Monica calls out, out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of wake, walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open up the door and let myself in. Dude, yeah, he burnt off his shoes. Bro doesn't even have socks anymore after he ran so fast. Sayori! She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Um, wake, waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori! Wake up, dummy! There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Exception has occurred. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best, and everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayori needed at all. She even told me how painful it was for, for others to, to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault! My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school and remained her friends with her like it's always been. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I only had one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now... I can never take it back. Never. 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 Never.
Wow. <sighs> that was... So... time is it? <laughs> uh, chat? I think that might be, uh, it for Doki Doki Literature Club for me today. Between my, uh, anger at the main character, my, uh, the, the embarrassment of, you know, the Natsuki comment earlier, and, um, I, uh, yeah, I will, um, I will continue this, honestly, probably tomorrow. Dia's just hanging around, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a really long day today, and I need to lay down, but yeah, no, I, I don't even know if I can keep playing the game after see seeing that, and then how embarrassed I was as well, just all this, that's a lot, that's a lot. <laughs> Wow. Also, don't worry. I know. I know that. Uh, yeah. Don't. Don't worry. I am okay seeing it. I know. So do not worry about me. But. Yeah. Well, if that wasn't a great example, for any of you who do not do well with stressful, anxiety-inducing stuff, uh, I do not recommend watching the rest of this playthrough. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you for uh, being here with me during this emotional roller coaster. Honestly, I think I'm gonna play more of this game tomorrow. But tonight, I gotta, I gotta lay down. So, hopefully, I'll see you all tomorrow. If you missed anything of Doki Doki Literature Club, it will be up on YouTube. And yeah, as always, later, losers and. Rest in peace, Sayori. God, that made me feel worse than I thought it would. Jesus Christ. Yeah, good night. <laughs>